Hi, this is Chris Hendren once again, and this is part six of our series on Maxim DL. One of my earlier videos, I talked about the automated focusing system that Maxim DL has built into it, and that's going to be what we covered today setting up electronic focusing runs as well as dealing with offset. For the purposes of this video, we've set up a system at OPT using an artificial star. We have a 4-inch refractor set up using a Starlight Express Lodestar as the camera, and we're going to be using an Optec TCFS focuser as we had those at hand. But you can do this with any equipment as long as it has an ASCOM driver and can connect to Maxim DL. So I already have the camera queued up. I'm going to connect to that. And just to make sure we're centered, I'm going to take a quick exposure. Now it says zero seconds, but what it's actually doing is our minimum exposure of about a thousandth of a second. And you can see the five stars for the artificial star. You can also see the tripod used to hold it. You're not going to see this in real life on a night sky, but for the purposes of this situation, the stars are the brightest objects, so those are going to be what the software locks onto. Once again, I already preset focus so that I knew I was close, but in order to actually show you how things work with the focuser, you go to the observatory control, go to the setup window. We actually have the TCFS connected in this case, but what you need to do first when you're selecting the equipment, choose the equipment, set it up. If you go to properties, it'll pop up another window, in this case using the Optech, control system here. You can say device is not connected. You go to connect and it should say device is connected. Now if it doesn't, it throws an error, you may need to check the COM port up here. You can also look under device manager on Windows to find out what COM port you're plugged into. If you click here, there's only an option for COM1 or COM3. In this case, we have it set up on COM3. Close this window, hit OK and hit connect. And if you go to focus now, you note that it says here, focuser status as a position and a temperature. In this case, the focuser actually tracks the temperature, which can be used to set a temperature offset through Optech's own software or other third-party software. I won't be addressing this currently because not every focuser can do automated temperature, but pretty much every computerized focuser can automate focus for you. One thing you'll note, if I go to move to absolute position of 3000, you'll note that as I'm taking pictures, the stars will actually change focus. Now we're at 3000. If I tell it to take another exposure here, well, there you go, we're out of focus. So obviously, when you move the focus to a different position, you're going to see a change in how the stars look. If I hit stop right here, and I tell it to go to a position halfway in between, we should see an improved image. Not in focus, but closer to focus. When you reach the position, focuser status and absolute position will be the same. You can also set it to move in or out incremental amounts if you want to adjust focus manually by about 50 steps or 100 steps at a time. One other thing you have to do when setting up your focuser is going to the autofocus options button. Now here you want to set your focuser step size. The nice thing with the Optech is it's already pre-programmed. If I click on microns and hit auto, it uploads the step size, which is just over two microns. Sometimes with certain focusers, you have to input the step size in microns or micro inches in order to get an accurate result. The other thing is you have settings such as telling you you want to move in or move out. In this case, I know I want to move in because I know I'm outside focus at 2500. 2000 is going to be closer to the focus position. The focal ratio of the telescope can be set. That helps determine how many steps it moves with each correction. And then in this case, the focus star half flux diameter tells you the half flux size of the star you want it to be under at best focus. Now this is a bit of a complicated concept. Half flux diameter means that when you're imaging a star, inside that diameter half of the star's light is contained. 
So if you're imaging a star, you'll have a bright central point and then the image dims as it gets closer to the edge of the star. Well, at a certain point, as you go outward from the center, you've now exceeded half of the star's brightness. So the focuser routine works off of the half flux diameter. The better your focus is, the smaller the diameter that contains half of the brightness of the star. In this case, on the night sky, leaving it at five is generally pretty good unless you have a long focal length system or are imaging with poor C, in which case you want to increase it. Given that the artificial star here is very bright and we're using a very fast scope, I'm going to use an artificially high number of 12. Again, probably even too high in this case, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. You can tune this as you wish. So one other thing to set up is the exposure tool here, where you tell it you want to set the exposure time for focus. In this case, I'm setting it very, very, very short. But under normal use, when you're on the night sky, you may have to set it to a few seconds. I commonly use a focus exposure of four seconds on my system out under a dark sky. In this case, we set OK. So we have the exposure set up at this point. What we actually want to do, that we know that we're close to focus, using the exposure and options we set up, we tell it to autofocus. It takes a picture, looks at the half flux diameter, and selects a star. So what it's doing at this point is actually adjusting the focus, as you can see here, and then moving the star, and it measures the half flux diameter at each point. One thing you'll note, if you look at the V curve here, now you'll see why it's called a V curve once they go past best focus. It's essentially measuring the diameter on an X and Y plot. As you get closer to ideal focus, it will actually hit the bottom of the V and start going up the other side. So in this case, we're getting very good focus here. I could have chosen a much smaller number. And oh, there you see, it's actually going up the other side. So it's past best focus, and it's measuring the diameter of the star. Now if you take this slope on this side of focus, and this slope on this side of focus, what you actually get is two slopes that meet in the middle. The lowest point of the V is your ideal focus position. So what it's going to do as it goes past the point we found, it's found the optimum focus, it moves to the ideal position, takes one more picture, and boom, there we go. We have a half flux diameter of 3.09, which gives us nice pinpoint star images. And this is just looking at part of the frame here. So once again, you can see quite clearly why this is called a V curve. It measures the slope of this line, measures the slope of this line, and then picks the spot in the middle where the star gives you the best possible focus. Now, when you are setting up your filter wheel, one of the things you'll actually note is something called focus offset. Every filter will refract light slightly differently. and Different telescopes will actually see red and blue light occasionally at different focus. We're running the simulator filter wheel right now, so this won't actually change things except for changing the focus position. As you can note, the current focus position is 2071, which it determined was the best focus position out of all of them within the range. Focus offsets are set up to zero for each. Now, focus offset always has to be a positive number. So the way you determine it is you run V-curve with each of your filters. It helps to run multiple times in a row. I recommend at least three to five times. And if you get any very weird results, throw them out and average the rest. So let's say next time I run V-curve instead of 2071, I get 2078. Given how fine the steps are on this focuser, that's realistic to have a few steps difference in between different exposures. If I keep shooting and I get 2071, 2078, 2075, 2097, I say that's an outlier, throw that out, and I can average the other three together. If you get at least three good results with each filter, then you want to write them down, either on a notepad or save somewhere where you can reference them. So let's say that 2071 is my average for my luminance filter. I go to my red filter and I get instead 1800. Okay, so that's a smaller number. That would mean I'd need to move by a couple hundred steps. That sounds extreme, but if your filters aren't parfocal or by different brands, that can happen. 
So in that case, I can't set the focus at a negative number, but I would leave red at zero, and I would set luminance here at 271. So what'll happen if I hit OK, if I connect to the camera, I'm set on the luminance. So when I take a picture with the red filter, it stays at 2071. But as soon as I switch to the luminance filter, it's actually going to shift higher. So if I do this, it's going to set to 2342. Now obviously this shows is out of focus because I'm not actually using a filter wheel, but that shows that the focuser is actually changing its position. So what you'll have to do is run multiple V curves for each filter, find out the correct focus offsets, and then set it under the filter wheel option in Maxim DL. It will save it so that way the next time you set up, you won't have to set your focus offsets again. Well, that covers most of the options for focusing, both how to set up an automated focusing run, as well as how to correct the focus offsets for different filters in your system. It will take practice. You'll need a night of good seeing that you don't mind giving up any imaging on to get the most accurate results, but you will be happy that you did because every time you go out and focus your system again, whenever you switch filters or whenever you need to tell it to focus on a star, you're going to get those pinpoint results that you crave. Once again, this is Chris Hendren at OPT. Thanks for watching.